Next week's episode will mark the one-year anniversary of Eli's review of God's Not Dead, an event that unwittingly kicked off an immersion in Christian cinema that, if not undertaken voluntarily, would violate the Geneva Convention. In the past year, we've watched Greg Kinnear indulge in childhood delusions born of massive head trauma. We've watched Nicolas Cage give meaning to the term bad for a Nicolas Cage movie. We've watched Dexter's dad look at a cross like he wanted to fuck it for two hours. And we've watched Kirk Cameron prove that there are worse career choices a child star can make than fatal overdose. And yet, in none of those films do I recall being quite as pissed as I was during the latest offering from the writing team that reminded us Kevin Sorbo was still alive with God's Not Dead. Their new film, Do You Believe, seemfully weaves together 82 plot lines, none of which pack any more dramatic punch than a tampon ad. So to help us tease apart this three-year-old Christmas light wad of a movie is our good friend Eli Bosnick. Eli, welcome back. Oh, thanks for having me, guys. So was, uh, was Do You Believe everything that you hoped it would be? Guys, this was so not fun. It was not, I have, I have a ton of fun. I love Nick Cage. I had fun. I had Kirk Cameron. I had fun. It's fun. Oh, Kirk Cameron's crazy. And he's talking about, he's like applying new criticism to Chris ornaments because something happened to him as a kid. Fun. Everyone's having a good time. This was drunk uncle at Thanksgiving wants to get you back into religion levels of not fun. Yes, it really was. This was the condom broke just as you came levels of not fun. <laughs> like that moment you have where you're just like, oh, it broke, broke, and it's already out of me. It's not <laughs> stop. That's how not fun. Just keep going. Not just keep fun going. Was. No point. Yeah, no, I've like I, every other movie I was at least it was it was like this movie had some parts that were just so bad they were fun, but by and large it was just a slog. It was a it was a challenge to get through this fucking movie and hatefully, grossly offensive throughout. Yeah, as a super theme. just and I, it just every time it would hit you with something more offensive. You'd be like, well, at least they're not going to talk about. Oh, she's Google like a bitch. <laughs> Who watched it? No one watched this movie in sequence. That's constantly how I felt. <laughs> it's like the not. Rashomon of Christian movies. <laughs> so many fucking characters. Oh my god, there, there had to be 30 of them in this fucking movie. We get it right away in this little hospital sequence that opens, and I shit you not, these are the characters that we meet just in this opening sequence. Uh, Rudy, the evil atheist doctor science man. Mm-hmm. His, his name isn't Rudy, it's, it's, but it's, it's Sean Astin. So, and then you get suicidal daddy issued chick who tried to kill herself with Chinese food. Yep. Um, Joe the friendly pedophile. Mm-hmm. Lily and Lily. Smooth, chocolatey voice. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. <laughs> this is my saving grace through that movie. Just <laughs> having him be like, you know, Lily, I had a daughter just like you. And I was just like, mm, sing me a song, Joe. <laughs> That was, except- that was the boss. That was the boss. That was your, your countryman right there. Yeah. That's right. Eli Bosnick's countryman, the boss. Yeah. So we also had uh, Lily and Lily's negligent bum mom. We had crotchety old man and wife. Crotchety old man, by the way, played by Lee Majors. Yep. Apparently, <laughs> they spent all of the money, uh, yeah, rebuilding him, and he needed to make a little bit more. And then, and, the, and his wife was Sybil Shepherd, who they dug up apparently too. And then you also had um, in this same fucking sequence, we also met Bobby, the born again EMT, and his nurse wife. That is. Nine characters that we meet in this one clumsy, meandering fucking sequence at the beginning of this movie. Oh, not and, to mention Matt the pastor. And always a good, good example of a terrible movie. Impossible to describe anyone except the atheist doctor without their job or their physical <laughs> <appearance>. Right. <laughs> if you can, I, I will Randy Million Dollar Challenge any Christian that can describe any character in this movie without their physical appearance or job. Yeah, right. He's kidding. Like, He's kidding. Germany will make you pay that if somebody <laughs> oh, yeah, calls in. And... We know that measles is all because of the way that you look inside your heart. Yeah, it's yes. not. <laughs> nope. You, you owe 100,000 euros. Yeah, and it's not. No, but I'll take you to a different <laughs> trial. <laughs> Go to other special court run by crazy people, maybe. The hospital definitely starts us exactly how crazy this is. So we get the crazy opening monologue, and the first scene is the doctor. And the first thing that this movie wants us to know is that the doctor is mean for being a busy doctor. Yes. (laughs) 
He comes in and he's like, listen, if you want to get out of here, you got to answer the question, yes. Did you try to kill yourself by eating Chinese food or did you just not try it? And she's like, I don't, eh, eh. And he's like, great, got to go. Busy doctor. <laughs> and we're, we're supposed to be like, that son of a bitch. Because there's several times where he comes in and acts like a doctor. Doesn't do anything mean. That's the meanest thing he does in the movie. And every other time he's just like, yeah, I got to go. Busy hospital. And they're like, son of a bitch. How dare you not stay and pray with your patient? <laughs> Like hot nurse senorita. Yeah, everybody in this movie that was educated, like the more educated they were, the more evil they were. That that oh. was laid out early in the film. Oh, H Hundo, Hundo P, any, <laughs> any semblance of education or wealth or knowledge about anything except Christ, you were instantly evil. Yes. Instantly yeah. evil. So then, so then we go, we move from there to a shot of the ER, right? And Joe is sitting in the ER, and we know we know Joe has a has a has a bad past because he's got a single tribal tattoo yes. on his tricep. <laughs> he has he has a tramp stamp that somehow moved to his right bicep, With like and that's how we know he's a yeah. hardened murderer criminal. Yes, yes, uh huh. And we also know that he's got some kind of horrible disease because every time he appears on screen, he conspicuously coughs at some point in the scene. Coughs and has a fucking eponine handkerchief moment. Yes. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's lung leukemia. He apparently yeah, had lung so leukemia. Definitely not. It's not cough yourself. It's not no, tuberculosis. That absolutely does not happen. 700. No. <laughs> so he's in the ER, and this woman leaves for a good, a solid five minutes, leaves her daughter alone with a giant man who talks to a little girl, puts his arm around yes. a little girl while talking to her. At which point I wrote in my notes in giant letters, stranger danger. <laughs> <laughs> right? I need an adult. <laughs> and the daughter and the, the, the mom comes over and the daughter's like, mom gets suspicious of strangers. But the mom is not suspicious of strangers. She's like, yes, please take us to your home. Right. Strange man who this could huge easily overpower man. us. Yeah, right. I, I, I wrote in my notes at this point, I said, I wrote like 10 times out of 10, Mira Sorvino gets drug fucked at the end of this. You know, and the daughter gets sold into slavery or something. That's yeah. the best for the daughter. That's, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that is that is not, that is not what's supposed. Also, she he like, we're supposed to know he's a good guy. Like the movie tries to wish her because he's like, here's the keys. Just, and I'm like, we're, what? he doesn't have other keys? Right. Are we supposed to assume he's given up this apartment forever so that you and your daughter feel safe for the night? So he leaves and goes and sleeps on the street. And then intermingled with this, I'm going to follow the plot lines because if I tried to do it in order, I'd have to kill myself. Oh, my God, yeah. The, the old guy's pacemaker has stuttered or something. So they go to the hospital. And at, while they're at the hospital, the wife calls the preacher in case he dies. Yeah, that That's how the extreme. preacher gets introduced, because he's like, false alarm, preacher, no need to come, which means that she was like, well, Reverend, you better get down here just in case, you know, he dies. <laughs> right. <laughs> We're not sure. So they called the pastor. Jefferson uh, Darcy. And then on, on the pastor's ways out, crazy homeless man is yelling crazy homeless man stuff yes. at people. <laughs> and the pastor just completely acts like it's a normal conversation. <laughs> he's walking down the street. He's a crazy homeless man. He's a crazy homeless man walking down the street, shouting at normal humans like, they got to answer to the cross. He's carrying a 27-foot cross Enormous behind cross. Yes. But he's, he's being a pussy about it. He had wheels on oh, it. He had a wheel on it. I you know, let's have a wheel on it. Wheels is cheating. Jesus Absolutely cheating. No yeah, Jesus did not have wheels in that fake story. As as he walked in on, on the uh, movie, I said to myself, they go, eventually there will be a non-stereotypical black man in a Christian movie, but not no, today. Not, not, on, not no, on this one. not today, because <laughs> immediately after the pastor's weird half conversation yes. with a crazy person, during which the pastor does not acknowledge the other half of the conversation is crazy, because he's like... <laughs> Hey, uh, friend, he's like, can I ask you a question? Sure. Do you cross in the cross of Christ? Well, I'm a pastor. <laughs> <laughs> right, all right. Have a good night. <laughs> and does anyone go, oh, that's a crazy person? You know, just because you mentioned Jesus in your crazy rantings doesn't make you like a spiritually enlightened person. In this movie, it does. Yeah. So then we cut into, once again, and I just, I, this movie is so racist we cut into black guys planning a robbery 
Uh-huh. And, the, yes. and the black guys in this movie are named Pretty Boy, <laughs> Criminal. Yes. There's a black guy. K Criminal. K Criminal. Yes. Criminal. And nefarious. <laughs> well, it's the named nefarious. black characters in this movie. I, I believe there Criminal? was also two of them that died named, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Forty and Little B. That's correct. Oh, was that the? Those were the other two guys in the, the van. Yes. Uh huh. The thing. So, yeah. <laughs> they steal a car in front of um, Riggs. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong black man, but yes, a black man. <laughs> Hasselbeck from Gone in 60 Seconds, actually. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. They steal a car in front of uh, God from Bruce Almighty. <laughs> and he, because he's a crazy person, walks up and is like, God doesn't want you to do that. To which the gentleman displays a gun and he goes, you're a fool. At which point he <laughs> says, "My fa- one of my favorite lines of the movie. I wrote it down too. <laughs> fool for Christ. <laughs> Which is such like a such like a last word needing to have situation to have with someone where it's like, oh man, you're a fool, fool for Christ, motherfucker. Oh shit, oh, fool for God. Christ, zinger. Oh, he got you, criminal with a K. <laughs> snap. I wish your grandmother hadn't named you criminal with a K. <laughs> that probably explains. Might have had a, a different career choice. By the way, in case anyone's keeping track, we're up to thirteen characters now that we've added: Delroy uh, and uh, Pretty Boy and Criminal. Right. And maybe 40 seconds into this 19-hour yes. movie, right. we've already committed several hate crimes. So we, they're, they drive away, and then we see Pretty Boy has doubts. And yes. he, goes, he goes, what if he's right? What if God doesn't want us to do this? And I was like, well, of course he does. I mean, assuming there's a guy, of course he doesn't want you to steal a van. No one did. And everyone so else that in the car. you can later kill like someone that. with it. Like, that's a crazy thing to say. Like, come on, man. You know God loves it when we steal van. <laughs> this motherfucker right here all <laughs> out about stealing vans. <laughs> all right. So um, now if, if we also get in this goddamn mess, I can't even tell you where this happens or if this is before or after anything. But as Pastor Matt is, is driving home, he also comes across the most cliche thing you can possibly be. A, 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 Pregnant girl digging food out of a dumpster. A semi-overweight. Yes. <laughs> pregnant woman. Exactly. Girl drinking, getting food out of the a, dumpster. Yeah. A ninety-eight-month pregnant girl. <laughs> yes. <laughs> digging food out of the dumpster, and so he stops to get her, and she says, "Are you a weirdo?" To which he says, "No, I'm a pastor." To which I responded out loud, "Yeah, you're a weirdo." Yeah. <laughs> so he takes her home, and then the wife. The wife is like, honey, this is a direct quote. She goes, honey, you promised not to do this again. How many homeless, pregnant black teens, <laughs> how many homeless, pregnant teens does he bring into the house? A good amount. There's now a house rule about this. <laughs> a good amount. They talked it through before, yeah. More clearly. than two, yeah. <laughs> how many warnings did he have before that was like, all right, it's going on the whiteboard. No <laughs> pregnant teenagers. <laughs> If you dirty a dish, wash it. No pregnant teenagers. So, so he's like, all right, fine. And so he checks her into a hotel room by herself. Yes. Right. Just, here you go. Here's a key to a hotel room. Have fun, kiddo. Here's some Cheetos. And with donuts. A bag of donuts. Right. Just throws her into the hotel room like fucking old boy. Like pregnant <laughs> And that's when we see, and this is where this movie, again, I'm having fun up until this point. This is where this movie gets no fun because we look down and she's got a pamphlet for family planning services. She's not 11 months yeah. pregnant here and thinking still maybe about the abortion. Right, yeah, exactly. which shows just how little education the makers of this movie have yeah. about abortion. Her is that they're already this, pregnant at this point. Right, because right, she has a baby in about a week. This movie probably takes place within a week. That's a safe thing to say. So she's around nine months pregnant, and the Christians are just like, oh, you never know. She might still go to that clinic and have a doctor be like, where the fuck were you eight months ago? (laughs) She's got a computer in her hotel room, and she's just Googling abortion. (laughs) She is Googling abortions. She is not... How does a fourth trimester abortion work? What does that I say? don't know. Did you mean you first trimester? No. Fourth. You hire a sniper while it's on her way to kindergarten? <laughs> <laughs> I 
Holy cow. No, it's the third one from the list, the one playing with the blocks. <laughs> yeah, this is an abortion. It's the 75th trimester abortion. <laughs> yes, just as he's graduating high school, that's when we'll yeah. cut his head off. <laughs> Scramble his brains. <laughs> that's how it works, I do believe. So then the black guys make their weird plan, at which point we announce that the bad guy's name in this movie is Nefarious. Yes. And they have that horrible moment where he's like, man, we take out Nefarious, it's our world. And I, li- I sat there for maybe six minutes trying to be like, take out Nefarious, take out Nefarious. What is that? And then all of a sudden, like a lightning bolt, I was like, <laughs> Oh my God! There's a character named Nefarious. It's yeah. not not a name for his dick. No. I kept it's thinking it was a maybe it was a gang. Like the other gang was called <laughs> Nefarious. No, no, no. Nope. So they go to kill. Oh wait! Before that happens, uh, the preacher gives the sermon, which I think is second only in craziness to Greg Kinnear's sermon about his son in do you in uh, heaven is for real uh-huh. where he just casually paints blood onto the crucifix <laughs> everyone has souvenirs to take home they all come in and they're like oh look free presents it's a little shitty wooden thing uh, oh look i got one too everyone's having their fucking cereal box moment and then he comes out and just very casually with a bucket and sponge starts splashing blood on the crucifix yeah. which in any sane uh, church, you would hope someone would be like, Reverend, are you okay? You're splashing blood on one of our props. <laughs> but he's splashing blood, and he gives a weird... Again, if this was a scene from Red State, it would have made perfect sense. <laughs> but it's supposed to be... He's like, did you? would you stand up and fight? Or would you go down and dance? Everybody cut loose. Foot loose. I mean, it's just... I kept being like, I have to follow the train of what this guy's saying because I've got it. But I couldn't do it because he kept being like, that blood, that blood right there. And he'd be like, okay, that blood, that blood, the blood of Christ. And he'd be like, would you stand for that blood? And I'd be like, what? <laughs> Lost me again. And then they have this, what they think, I guess, is clever. As he's doing the sermon, we're also getting the black guy is trying to take out Nefarious and sort of a cross-cutting montage that makes absolutely no sense, but, you know, they've seen other people do it in movies, so they did it too. Right, and their technique, by the way, <laughs> their technique for killing Nefarious is to drive a van through the side of his house. <laughs> right into the middle that's of it. That's their game plan. <laughs> Three of us are going to... That's This is the planning moment of them get. okay, here's what we're going to do. Three of us are going to get in a van, which we steal, and we're going to drive through the side of his house. Wait, what? what yeah, no, don't interrupt me while I'm playing. We're <laughs> waiting in a car outside, and then after we jump out of the van that has driven through the side of a home, again, please don't interrupt. 80, I've told you before, we're driving a house through the van. We put a pin in that. We all voted. I won. And then they, there's a gunfight in there, which we don't see. And criminal, with a K comes running out with just a bag of money, which is good because Nefarious, a gangster who lives in suburbia, has bank-level security instantly show up. Hundreds of police officers, like helicopters and tanks. It's like he got a five-star rating in Grand Theft Auto. That's what happens because they there's a like small shootout in the middle of nowhere within 12 seconds, at which point he goes into the church, and Joe sees that he's being chased by the police. And Joe just is like, come on in, we'll hide you from the police. Right. <laughs> that could have been a murderer rapist. Right, no idea. No idea what crime this young man has committed, but he's just like, that's all right, come on in and have a seat in the church. Turns out it was I'll a murder. cover for you. <laughs> right. Serial killer. Right. <laughs> so he covers for him, and then we get into what is... What is the the most painful part of this movie, which is the paramedic scene. Yeah, Ugh. and boy, I'll tell you what, if you weren't pissed off me. yet, this one oh. will do the trick. So rough. So he gets called to this guy who's been trapped under an oil tank, which is which is the only redeeming part of this scene. <laughs> this guy who's just crushed <laughs> up like Wiley Coyote messed yes. up on the job. <laughs> We shouldn't have ordered from Acme. Stupid. <laughs> At which point, 
the guy goes, I wrote, uh, when the moment I saw him, he was like, I have a family. The guy under the tank's like, I have a family. I'm scared. I wrote, question that will never be asked. Why God rolled a tank on top of a guy with a family? <laughs> so the, the paramedic's standing there with him, and he's like, yeah, you're dead. Which, I mean, in all fairness, giant water yeah. tanks on him. And he's like, are you, are you a Christian? And he's like, I don't really. And this is the, it's not like. It, there's not like a moment. He's just like, I don't really. Er, 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 I have a water tank on me. I don't really have time to talk about. It. <laughs> Could you please give me medical care? I'll talk to you later about this. <laughs> like here, I want you to. And he like presses the cross into the guy's hand, and he's like, think about Jesus. And the dead, the dying guy is like, Jesus. Fucking recites the last words of God's not dead. And then dies. And the wife, the the wife, we see the wife come over and the cops are like, man, you can't go over there. And then after the cross is in the guy hand, he said the cops are just like, well, he's dead now. Let her through. Right, so right. they just let this woman's, this guy's wife come through and see your husband trapped under a water tank. Worst police barrier ever. Right. And then they pull the, she pulls the cross out of his hand and asks the very reasonable question, what is this? <laughs> At which I wrote, exactly how you should react when someone presses a religious symbol into your dying loved one's hand. Oh my God. The, Not and, you know, and I thought maybe this movie was going to actually explore that. And yes, a big part of this movie was about that, but they never actually explore anything. They're not willing to like take a look at that and say, well, okay, that was kind of fucked up for him to do while he's, you know, on the city's dime. Uh, you know, the movie nope. just lionizes him for this action. Yeah. Fully support, fully supports this. I wrote so many times throughout this, all that paramedic has to be is a Muslim. Yep. And everyone yep. who saw this movie would be like, hey, go get him! He put, the little, <laughs> he put the little moon, he put the heart stars and horses, clothes and balloons into the guy's hand before he died. Now he's going to go to the Lucky Charms place and try to go to Baby Jesus. <laughs> everyone who watched this movie, I guarantee you, if you did an exit survey and were like, was the paramedic right? They'd be like, yeah. And then if you showed it again with him as a Muslim, yeah. they'd be like, that paramedic, he broke the law. He should go to Bratham jail. He should go to Jesus jail. Because they have time Well, and then... <laughs> but instead of exploring that, later on in the movie when he learns that he's being sued over having done this, instead of just saying in the movie, well, yeah, because that's against the law and you can't do that because of, you know, the First Amendment, they say, the the boss tells him, well, you know how it's going to work, Bobby. She's going to say that you refused to give him medical treatment until he, you convert, he converted to your religion. <laughs> that, that's how that works. And the police chief, by the way, or the fire chief, by the way, makes a very good point. He's like, you know, it'll all blow over. You should just apologize, which he fucking should. Yeah. He fucks because of what we're about to find out about this character later on in the movie. <laughs> that what we're about to find out about the man he just put a cross on. He totally should. And he goes, he goes, you should apologize. And he goes, or what? And the fire chief looks at him like that wasn't an or what statement. I was just <laughs> you should <didn't>. apologize. <laughs> we are done talking. <laughs> Everyone acts totally civil to him, except for a crazy evil horror lawyer who comes over before his trial and is like, hey, so I hear you're one of those stupid fucking Christians. <laughs> He's like, yes, ma'am, I am. And she's like, I just fucking snapped a baby's neck for fun. And I'm going to get you. And he's like, and that's when we find out that the guy who he gave the cross to was not just was not just like a guy, he was a atheist. Yes. A member of the AHA whose catchphrase is good without God. And I and my girlfriend and one other man in the theater all made involuntary screams of pain. <laughs> it was like, oh, he was a part of the American Humanist Association. And we all went, <laughs> Because listen, if this guy, if this guy trapped under the water tank is a lapsed whatever collapsed christian or just not that religious if he even if he falls into the nuns right mm -hmm. you're sort of like all right he does the religious thing that's gross but if i found out that my girlfriend was in an accident and a paramedic 
pushed a cross into her hand and made her do a deathbed conversion when she was scared and in pain and delirious, I would shoot him in the face with a fucking spear gun. I wouldn't <laughs> sue him because you can't sue someone who you cooked and eaten. <laughs> And that's what's so crazy about this movie is at no point does anyone acknowledge how fucking intrusive and hot. That's why this wasn't a fun movie. Cause right. I, just, I kept wanting that wife to come in for a side tackle at some point <laughs> the movie, him talking to his wife and she's like, you son of a bitch. Wow. <laughs> And yeah, like you said, they, they like they, that's what was so frustrating is that they didn't even explore the fact that maybe there's something wrong with doing that. Right. And the only reason that people are upset about it is because they a want money uh -huh. and b are cranky. Like it's oh, you're being a spoil sport. Let me let me let me death pet convert people. Don't be such a spoil sport. <laughs> that was what it was like. It was like I gotta share my love of Jesus. Could you just back off? And the wife was like, uh uh uh, gotta ruin your fun. <laughs> Right. All right. Sorry. Jumping back in time. So now we go to old couple. We go to old couple who has the shrine to their dead daughter in their house. And this and is this... maybe the fifth time we've seen a shrine to a dead daughter in the house of a person in a movie that we've watched together. Uh, which is why I wrote in my notes, this movie should be called Grief Counseling is Important. <laughs> Because there was just a bunch of people in this movie who did not need Jesus. They needed therapy. Yeah. The old woman goes, where was our where was God when our daughter was killed? And he goes, he was just as sad as we were. <laughs> but it didn't stop him from letting it happen. No. All right, cut the scene. <laughs> right. He begged that drunk driver. And I just pictured, like, God trying to take some guy's keys out of his hand outside of a bar. He's like, come on, man, give me your keys. You can't, you can't drive. You can't. I'm the creator of the universe. Give me your keys, man. <laughs> we'll call you an Uber. I will pay for your Uber, bro. Don't do that. Oh, Jerry, you're going to get caught. You're going to get arrested. All right, don't call me. Shots. Let's do shots. <laughs> God goes back to the bar. Oh, oh, and then we get to our favorite moment. And I think one of, I, it's not the best theory, because I have, I have a theory that unites this entire movie, but I'm going to save it to oh, the end. Oh, wow. That's a oh, tall do. order right there. So Brad. atheist doctor and uh, whore lawyer. Yeah. Whore lawyer. Whore, whore lawyer. <laughs> They're More. having dinner. They're having dinner. <laughs> and a couple at the table next to them are very quietly praying. And the doctor asks, acts like they are squatting over their plates to take shits. He's going to switch plates and he, he's like, oh, God, look at it. Oh, can't they do? He and actually he says, can I get to dinner without being proselytized to by these people? Silently. Holding Silently. hands, that's it. Holding hands, very quietly. <laughs> and he goes, man, don't they know Jesus didn't cook that food? The chef did? And I'm like, oh my God, that's what they think our eighth, our arguments are like. Is that we're just like, don't they know that that, 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 that plumber didn't make the water? The water... <laughs> Which is when a great fan theory came through, and I'm going to give credit where it's credit to. I saw this movie with my lady friend, and she realized this later on in the movie. He doesn't like prayer, and he's afraid of crosses. He's an atheist, and he's evil. That doctor is a vampire. Oh, hell yeah. He's a fucking vampire. <laughs> Never this see him during the day. Is about a bunch of Christians who don't know that the dead walk amongst them. <laughs> he was eating that a rare steak. I saw that. Samwise Ganji the Vampire <laughs> among their witness. Then we have the meat cute of the movie, and the meat cute of the movie is a mutual suicide attempt from China, from Spy Kids Girl and Soldier Boy. Yes. They're both going to jump off the same bridge, and then they see he lays the cross out, and he's like, oh, wait a second, lowercase t. So he turns around, and he's like, hey! <laughs> Hey, and then they get coffee, and then she's like, well, if you were God, he, he goes, if you were God, what would you change? And she goes, puppies would be puppies forever. <laughs> At which point I wrote, this girl has obviously never heard of AIDS, or she's a fucking <laughs> monster. Right? And he then points that out by being like, well, I would get rid of war. And she's like, well, you made my puppy answer look pretty fucking can I, dumb. Can I change my answer, can I change answer, my answer now? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no, I, when I say puppies would be puppies forever, I mean that's because 30,000 children under the age of five a year wouldn't die. <laughs> that's, 
That's that's puppies <laughs> puppies forever is short for that. It's like a, <laughs> you wouldn't understand. You're probably from the East Coast from the West Coast. That's <laughs> we, it's a different thing. When we say problem of evil, we just sum up the problem of evil with puppies and puppies forever. <laughs> Ooh, that waiter's taking a while. <laughs> bottomless brunch or what? <laughs> so oh, then, shit. so then we have the girl we go back to the teenage girl and again this movie just gets it's just these moments of unpleasantness that made it so hard to watch she's talking to the woman and again i so i have an adopted baby sister so this isn't necessarily a christian movie thing but it's just a movie thing that always bothers me where a character goes well i could never have children and the other one goes well why didn't you adopt and it's like "Mm, well that's not really a baby is it (laughs) 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 what the fuck is wrong with you (laughs) It's, it's constant. It's not just in Christian movies. No, you're it's in right. all movies, but it's especially in this one. She's just like, well, I feel like a mother should be there when her daughter's born. And I'm like, why? So you can bite the umbilical cord that she knows <laughs> you? <laughs> I need to witness the afterbirth so I can always know that we and I are connected. It's just <laughs> fucking stupid. At which the girl tells her, again, proving Christians know nothing about abortion. God, yes. She goes, I felt it kick on the way to my first aport- uh, appointment, which turned out to be an abortion. Yes. They tricked her, told her they were, she was getting prenatal care, and apparently took her to Planned Parenthood. That's what they do when you walk in there. They're like, oh, this is perfect. You're what? What? Eight, nine, ten months pregnant? We got, we've got a, a process for that. We can, that's, that's great. We can force that's abort great. your daughter. What kind of insurance yeah. do you have? Oh, you're homeless? No, we'll still do it. We'll still do it. Right. Well, this was, she says it's at her first appointments, which probably means, and this is when she was with her mom, so that probably means what? Six weeks? Eight weeks? Something yeah. like that? So she felt a lima bean kick her. <laughs> and that's how she knew. She felt a lima bean with about the sentience of a brain tumor. <laughs> and she was like, no, the baby wants to live. So she leaves her home as though the person at Planned Parenthood. What is that scenario? That's the movie I want to see. It's just that girl going in and then being like, great. So this is your first visit. And if you'll just spread your legs, get the homer, get her. <laughs> Another one tricked into having an abortion. Good, good. Let's use it for stem cell research, which we all know will never cure anything. <laughs> Here you go, Dr. Vampire. Some blood for you. <laughs> Renews the aborted fullness. There you go. That was edgy callback. <laughs> Every time we went back to a character, it was like remembering I had a dentist appointment. I was just like, oh, fuck. Yeah. Yeah. That... So we go back to black guy who is now saved uh-huh. because they hid him when he was in the middle <laughs> the of a cross. Right. He has his wet bag of money, which he then gives to the preacher. And the preacher is just, he's like, I want you to have it. The preacher's like, I can't take this. And he's like, I want you to, though. And he's like, oh, all right, all right fine. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> well, I'll take this strange like money, that. random guy. <laughs> and this happens because he goes home. He goes home and talks to his grandmother who's a very upsetting character. <laughs> His grandmother sings Amazing Grace to him. Really and badly. The really worst, badly. <laughs> worst singer. And I wrote, you don't, they couldn't find a black woman who can sing? They don't have any of those? There's one in the theater right now. Right. And yeah, exactly. And next to me, I'm sure the woman who was like, mm, 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 would have done a much better job. Couldn't but have done she sings worse. this. And we, she makes it through the whole song. She's like, Amazing Grace. <laughs> like the first two episodes of American Idol where you get to just watch them make fun of the mentally ill, you know, the ones we all turn in. Yeah. That was what we just got like an audition smack in the door. Untalented funeral singer. Cut. Right. Obviously, they did not tell that woman she would have to sing. They were like, great, so we think you're really good for the part, and this is the part where you sing Amazing Grace, and she was like, oh no, I'm tone deaf, I can't sing it. <laughs> well, that's fine, we still want you to. All right. Make <laughs> I don't even know the words to this shit. <laughs> Jesus came down with his grace and he turned Cyclops into one of the horsemen's cockpits. <laughs> and then Wolverine got all the attention stuck down of his body. Might as well have had her play bagpipes. Would have been a lot better. If she completely, un- not knowing how to play bagpipes, had just blown into that thing. It would have been a lot better than the music that right. came out of her mouth. Indistinguishable, yeah. So then we have the we go back to the mom 
and the daughter, she's there with the woman. Her and the and the old woman have a bonding moment, at which I wrote, "This kid is sexy, flexible, and super trusting." I don't like where this movie is. <laughs> Even if it's Sybil Shepherd, yeah, still awkward. <laughs> right. Oh, uh, so then. Right. Oh, okay. So then we get to. Yeah, this okay. This so whole now thing we're is at... so fucking confusing. That that little O oh, and um, that was the best synopsis I've heard of this movie yet. <laughs> <laughs> so then we get to the bridge. We're here at the bridge now. Yes, the we're only the bridge. bridge in the entire region with a high place to jump off or, yeah, have characters yeah. meet in a stupid crash. In, yeah. in Chicago, they have the one bridge. <laughs> So here's what's happening on this bridge simultaneously. <laughs> Nefarious <laughs> finds criminal and pretty boy. Uh-huh. Kills pretty boy because his gun has three bullets. He comes in, <laughs> points his gun, shoots three bullets, and then is like, damn, out of bullets. Should have filled up the rest of this gun, which is very clearly a nine millimeter and holds anywhere between six and 12 bullets. <laughs> but he's just like, pat, pat, pat. Then Criminal tackles him. They have like a weird foot chase to the bridge. Uh So Criminal has a foot chase to the bridge. Atheist lawyer lady hits Nefarious with her her car because she's texting. (laughs) And then old couple are driving to bring Lily to Joe, who wants to see her before he dies, because that's gross. (laughs) Um, Oh, I forgot to mention, Joe's last request to... To the friend who comes to see him, she's like, Joe, you were so good to us. Is there anything I can do? And he's like, yeah, bring me your daughter. (laughs) I would have been like, no. I want your seven-year-old daughter to watch a death. I'd appreciate that. No, I'm going to go ahead and pass. (laughs) Would you like another blanket? (laughs) Maybe we could do that. I wanted so badly in that scene between the two of them for her to be like, Joe, what what were you in jail for? Oh, I raped and murdered a bunch of little girls. <laughs> um. Anyways, bring Lily around. I want to say none <laughs> of them were named Lily. So it's kind of I feel like list, you're going to make connections that aren't there. But please bring me your daughter. <laughs> I'm going to a, an oblivion without consequences. <laughs> so, so the grandparents, not the grandparents, because they're just old people. The old people are bringing Lily. Yeah. The pastor and his wife are bringing the teen who has gone into labor, and the paramedic is just driving. He just happens to be and there. And so right? is the soldier guy. So is the soldier guy. Yeah. He just happens to be there. Yeah. That's right. So yeah. They all meet up on this bridge, and there is the weirdest, <laughs> most giant, <laughs> epic car crash. Everyone's car crashes into everyone's <laughs> I wrote, and just while this is, it happens in 12 seconds. So I literally, in the movie, I was just like, oh, 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 because you're just, you're so surprised. And I wrote, there's a strong possibility that everyone is dead at the end of this movie. <laughs> um, and then, so the pregnancy goes wrong and the pregnant girl is dying of childbirth. Yeah. Like you do. <laughs> Old people crash off the side of the bridge with Lily. They're about to fall, and then the Marine catches and single handed <laughs> yes. holds on to a car, a car and it's by himself. Car. Yes. Because we forgot to mention, he has superpowers. Right. <laughs> All of a sudden, firefighter saves Atheist lawyer from the car. Marine saves Lily. Everyone jumps in the car. Baby is born. Retard learns to play the tuba. It's just <laughs> everything happens. <laughs> All the things in this movie happens. And then the old guy, oh, I forgot this. The old guy's in the car and his leg is broken. So he's like, here, let's get you out of there. And he's like, no, you got to leave me here. My leg is broken. At which point, every other character in the movie is like, no, man, your leg's broken. We're going to pull you out. And he's like, oh, okay. I thought it, I thought it was like a horse where if my leg was broken, you had to let me drown in the river. My bad. Yeah, if you can go ahead and pull me out of the car. And then the pregnant teen dies, and then they just steal her baby. They right. <laughs> I think you just. I think she goes. You know how you said you wanted to be present for your daughter that's being born. I think you just did. As though they would show up to the hospital and be like, "Yeah, well, you know, a teenager died in the back of our car. <laughs> it's like a lost property law thing, right? If it ends up in your home or people, you know, we just figured we could keep this baby." 
you know, you wouldn't keep mind, it. Would you? It's ours now. It's, it's, <laughs> how many teenagers have died in the? I mean, listen, I've had a lot of teenagers <laughs> die in the back of my car, but I've never been allowed to keep the baby. <laughs> And you wouldn't even ask, would you? I mean, that would be crazy no, to even ask. Never, never. I cut them up and eat them like a solid American. <laughs> no, so, and, and apparently uh, uh, the atheist lawyer was carrying a bunch of TNT with her when she got into the car uh, right, accident. Is, her car explodes because it's so full of sin. In a mushroom cloud <laughs> out of nowhere. Yeah. yeah. And she turns to Bobby, who she just took for everything he's got at this at this trial, and who's just saved her right before her car exploded like fucking Fukushima. And she <laughs> says, "Why did you save me?" At which point, Bobby doesn't say, "Because I'm not a demonic asshole." He says, "Because Jesus, Jesus, Jesus." This Christ. woman's just like, like we have no concept of kindness. Like we're like, but I don't understand. I'm not going to give you any of my Jew gold. <laughs> Why would you save me? There's nothing in it for you. <laughs> so fucking horrible. And, then, and that's when I had my realization that ties this entire movie together. This movie is a horror movie. And the killer is Jesus. <laughs> Every time someone's, this is final destination, but instead of dodging death, you start believing in Jesus, something fucking kills you. <laughs> Pretty boy, starts believing in Jesus, gets shot by nefarious. Little girl, converted to Christianity, dead. Just all these people, the mo it's a horror movie, and Jesus is the killer. Because each of these people are united by their love of Christ. Oh, guy trapped under the water tank. Yeah. Starts believing in Jesus, right. fucking die. <laughs> the moment you start, this is a horror movie, and if you watch it through that lens, it's a great movie. Because you're like, no, man, don't believe in Jesus. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Why won't they stop believing in Jesus? Oh, God, Jesus is behind. The crucifix is in the house. The crucifix. The Bible passages are coming from inside the house. It made the whole, that realization made the whole movie worth it. When I realized that you could just have called this Final Destination Jesus, and, and it would have made $20 million. Everyone would have been like, yeah, man, did you see all these people converting out? Jesus comes after them. Because that's why they all die absurd crazy bullets ricocheting off the ceiling and fucking pregnancy related your uterus bleeds out deaths <laughs> right sorry we're getting to joe yeah, yeah. <laughs> cut to the hospital the finale <laughs> we cut to the hospital and joe and joe dies yeah oh and then and then joe comes back to life <laughs> You know, only the black people stay dead in this. But movie. but the leukemia is gone when he comes back. He's yeah. cleaned his bloodstream out while he died for two minutes. Yeah. Uh -huh. right. And I want to point out at this point, in the theater I was in, when Joe came back to life, the people in the theater around us acted like it was real. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> that actor was never... They, they did... Uh, spoiler alert. They did it because the actor was never dying. <laughs> <laughs> and the theater was like, oh, oh, he's alive. <laughs> he's alive. So he's fucking alive. And the doctor comes in. And again, this is just totally a reasonable conversation. He goes, it's a miracle. To which the doctor goes, no, it's not. And then he goes, well, what is it then? And he goes, I don't know. Because I'm a doctor. <laughs> I'm not allowed to just be like, <laughs> You're a man with a fever who woke up from a coma. I'm a doctor. One of us is allowed to say it's a miracle. <laughs> One of us went to seven years of medical school. So bizarre how they tried to make him evil and failed. In, in, in the same way that they tried to make God miraculous and failed. I'm thinking to myself, like, this is how low the bar is now for Christianity, that even in a movie that is a work of fiction that they're not even saying was based on a true story. You can't get God to do anything better than like restart this guy's heart two minutes later or send a fucking, you know, car wielding the soldier right as the car's about to go off. You, like, you're God. You could have just like not made the accident happen, right? Not given him cancer in the first place. There you go. <laughs>
You could have made the evil doctor not a hobbit that's really cute and not helpful in making him look evil also. Yeah. Right. It's so tr- – and then he goes, he goes, well, we need to run some tests. And he goes, you're not going to find anything, which, of course, that never gets proven through the movie. So in my head, they're just like, oh, no, you still super have cancer. <laughs> <laughs> you are very much still going to die. Yeah. You just are not going to die as quickly as we thought. But still within the next 24 hours or so. Oh, all right, then. <laughs> Can you bring Lily back in here and everyone else leave the room and maybe <laughs> the door and sit real loud on the outside? I'm gonna, I'm gonna do sex stuff to her. Might what as well just let but, you know now. I only have 24 hours. Dead in 24 hours. hours. What, are you, <laughs> what am I fucking lying about? So then, and then again, a staple of a Christian movie, a jock jam Jesus tune. Yes. <laughs> Comes pouring through the speakers, just like, do you believe in God? And I was just like, oh God, it's over. Thank God, <laughs> screaming Christian rock song into my ears. I mean, it means it's done. At one point in this movie, I wrote down in my notes, I have to pee, but I would miss the introduction of five more characters. Yeah. Easily. <laughs> God, that was such a rough one. No fun. Can you imagine that. going to the bathroom during this movie? You'd be like, what did I miss? Everything. <laughs> <laughs> Everything and nothing. Yeah. Oh, this well, fucking movie. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, you know, I, I guess all we can hope for is that Kirk Cameron will decide that Easter needs saving too. <laughs> oh, I only hope so. But uh, of course, Eli, I can't thank you enough uh, for joining us once again. Oh, thanks for having me, guys. <laughs>